Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be talking a little bit about net cafes and specifically a piece of software that Microsoft released back in the mid 2000s to help set up computers for use in a net cafe or another environment where just a lot of people would be accessing that computer throughout the day. So you might have also seen this in use in a public library for example. It was originally known as the Shared Computer Toolkit until Microsoft changed the name to Windows Steady State a few years later, and today we're going to be taking a look at the final version of it that was released in 2008, and that's version 2.5. By the time this version came out, it was compatible with the 32-bit versions of Windows XP and Windows Vista, and the best way that I can describe this is it's kind of like a mini group policy editor, but it also had some capabilities that were not available through the group policy editor. So I've got a copy of it right here on the good old Windows XP 2000's custom-built computer. Uh, the installation process itself is pretty straightforward and super simple. We're just going to accept the license terms. It does have you validate uh, with Windows Genuine Advantage, so you have to be running a, a you know genuine copy of XP. So it comes up with a command prompt that starts its service in the background, and that's it for the installation process. Uh, now it does ask you if you want to install Windows Live Toolbar. We're not going to bother doing that. And we're just going to jump into the program by opening it up here from the desktop. And it will bring up this uh, getting started help documentation. This is pretty important to read through if you were going to be using this in a production environment. Now, I have messed around with this program a little bit off camera just to get familiar with it. So we're going to minimize the help documentation for now and just jump right into exploring uh, what this program could do. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new user account. Uh, so we'll just call this uh, NetCafe. Uh, we're not going to bother giving it a password. We'll use uh, local disk C as the user location because it's our only option there. And just like, you know, making a user account through Windows XP's control panel, we're just going to give it a user profile. We'll go with the soccer ball. Why not? And then it'll take you to the user settings panel. And this is where kind of the meat of this program is because this is where you can set up restrictions for the user account. You can block certain programs from running. You can even set a timeout to where, you know, the user can only use the system for a certain amount of time before being forced to log off. And you can also have it to where if somebody was using this system and just they got up and left without logging off and the system was just sitting there idle, you can have an idle timeout to where it will automatically log off after a certain period of inactivity. I think it would definitely be important to, if you're going to have these set up, to have a timer display on the screen so that somebody can see how much time they have left. And you can also have the system restart whenever somebody logs off. I think it would also be important to lock the profile to uh, prevent permanent changes from being made to things like the user folders, you know, like my documents, my pictures, that sort of thing. Uh, any changes in there will just be wiped on log off. And um, you also, let's go into the Windows restrictions here. So you do have a few kind of levels here you can set. So they got high, medium, low, or no restrictions, uh, which is not a recommended setting. But you can also just customize it yourself. So you see we have start menu restrictions, general restrictions, and well, those are the, actually the only two things. A lot of this stuff you could do from the group policy editor. Uh, so you got things like we can remove certain icons from the desktop. Uh, we can prevent access to things like task manager, the registry editor, and the command prompt, which would definitely be important for a, a public use system like this. Um, maybe we want to, let's show the recycle bin icon on the desktop. I'm also going to uncheck prevent users from saving files to the desktop because there is a feature that I'll show you later on that kind of counteracts this. And then down here at the bottom, we have the ability to hide certain drives from the user in like Windows Explorer. And I think the only thing I'm going to check here is the C drive. Because I'm thinking, you know, if this machine was in use in like a public library, you're probably going to have people coming in with their own like USB flash drives with their files on them. They'd want to be able to plug into this system and like open up, you know, like a Word document or, you know, something like that. So you'd probably also want to have an installation of Microsoft Office on here. Yeah, so, you know, I don't want to prevent people from accessing their own files. So we're just going to allow access to the other drives. So we got that set up. We'll move on to feature restrictions now which uh, you see we have things in here for Internet Explorer and Microsoft Office which are like the two main things people are probably going to be using on a public access system like this. For Microsoft Office we're definitely going to want to just check all of this stuff. We want to disable add-ins, disable macro stuff, disable web toolbar, location box, use of visual basic applications. That all seems pretty important to me. Now Internet Explorer we have a little bit more um, leeway with. Uh, maybe we want to allow printing if we have 
had a printer hooked up to this system. We got some menu options. We probably want to leave most of this stuff checked uh, to remove, you know, access to internet options. We got some toolbar settings down here. We'll just leave all those checked for now. And uh, you can also just outright prevent internet access uh, except for certain, you know, websites that you have in this box down here. So maybe if this was like in a library and you only wanted people to be able to access the library's website to like view their, you know, current book database, um, you could just set that up here. You can also change the homepage uh, as well. So we'll maybe change the homepage to, uh, I don't know, theoldnet.com. Why not? And everything else looks fine to me. Then you've got blocking programs. So, you know, if you want to just block all the programs over here in this list uh, you can do that you can also just add specific programs if you know something doesn't show up in here uh, that you want to make sure to prevent access to uh, so we'll just um, maybe we want to allow Windows Messenger and I don't know we'll put Movie Maker on there as well why not and yeah that's everything in the user settings so we're gonna click OK to save that and now we've got to modify the global computer settings over here. So first of all, computer restrictions. I think I'm actually going to leave most of this the way it is, except for well, I'm going to remove the administrator username from the welcome screen. Now, notably, I am not logged into the administrator account. This is just my personal account, but it is a system admin. Um, but the, the ideal way from what I've seen to use this program is to use the administrator account to, you know, log in and, and, and make changes through it because you'll be able to actually hide that from the login screen you can't hide like other user accounts just through this program but what we can do is go into control panel i'll go into user accounts and i'm going to uh, go in here and just add a password uh, to my user account and we'll make my files and folders private as well so now this is a password protected account so people aren't going to be able to log into it just from the login screen unless of course they know the password you can also lock down the system even further by preventing people from making new files and folders on drive c preventing write access to usb storage devices uh sure we'll prevent people from opening up microsoft office documents from within ie that's fine and we'll hit OK. Next, you've got schedule software updates, pretty self-explanatory. You can just have uh, Windows Steady State download updates. We're just gonna disable this for now, that's fine. And last but not least, we have Windows Disk Protection, which I think is one of the coolest features in Windows Steady State. And this is why that I actually configured the user restrictions to allow people to save files to the desktop, because this essentially makes that irrelevant. Because when we turn this on, it's going to make a cache file of the hard drive. So now if somebody were to log into the NetCafe account and make a bunch of changes, save files to the desktop, they can really do whatever they want. The moment they log off, all those changes will be reverted. So notably, you see here on the welcome screen, we don't have the turn off computer option that has been disabled. Uh, so we're just gonna log into the NetCafe account. And you see a couple things happen. Actually, SoundMax apparently comes up and uh, wants us to, <laughs> to uh, you know, specify what we have plugged into the line out jack, which are speakers. Uh, so there we go. This uh, is something I would definitely not want to run. Uh, so we're going to just configure that. Now, see, this is why you you definitely want to you know kind of test this stuff out before you actually set the system up for use. You want to make sure that you have everything set to your liking. That you don't have certain programs able to run if you don't want them to. But you see right here we have this little pop up that tells us that hey, you know, all the changes you make to the hard disk are going to be just reverted when you log off. So don't just save like important documents documents and think you're going to be able to access them again later on. Of course, if you disable the ability to write to external media, uh, people can't even do that. So that would be kind of mean. Uh, so you want you probably want to leave that enabled. And down here at the bottom right, you see we have that countdown timer as well as another reminder to save your work before mandatory log off although it does not say like two removable media. This is something unfortunately you cannot change. Uh, I tried to figure out a way to do that. It's not a thing you can do from within the Windows Steady State program, which is kind of unfortunate. It would have been nice to be able to, you know, modify this message to your liking. Uh, but this will stay on top of every window. So that's why it's nice that you can move it around. So if you had it up here and then you wanted to close this window, you can just move it out of the way and uh, do that. So yeah, you can also like drag it off of the screen if you really don't want to be able to see it and then just maybe pull out every so often to see how much time you have left um, but yeah we go into the start menu you'll see that um, we have very few options in here uh, we can open up you know Internet Explorer Outlook Express in fact some of this stuff like I don't think Windows Media Player I guess this is uh, available we did not block this program so you can open that up just fine 
Uh, we're just going to get out of it here. But you will have things that still show up in here, like command prompt that will just say when you open it that it's been disabled. So not everything in here is necessarily going to be able to be run by the user. But let's just maybe open up Notepad. Oh, no, we can't because that's been disabled. So let's maybe uh, go to Internet Explorer here and uh, move this out of the way. You see our, our homepage is the old net. And you see under Internet Options, that has been disabled. Uh, we can't even click on the help menu. And I think with the way I had this set up, I had most of the restrictions enabled. So we're not going to be able to even like open a new window that's been disabled. Let's try to, can we find things? Okay, so we can find things on pages. So that's nice. But yeah, so that's that. And uh, you know, you can't do the whole like, oh, I'm going to type C in the address bar to get around like not being able to see the C drive that's been disallowed. Um, try to go to C Windows that's been disallowed, but we can open up my computer and you see our removable devices will show up in here. Uh, these over here do show up, but we can't actually click on them. And you can't even right click here in Windows Explorer uh, that has been disabled. So yeah, you see we can really lock down the system a lot if we wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save uh, just a shortcut to the old net to the desktop. So uh, we'll so it's actually just saving the whole web page, not just a shortcut. Why don't we uh, go to send here, shortcut to desktop. Why don't we go to, I don't know, google.com and maybe we want to send a shortcut to that, to the desktop. And then maybe we want to, I don't know, rename this to whatever we want and like move these all over here and go into the old net files and oh we can't even open that up look at that this is why again it would be it would be important to kind of test this out uh, before you actually put the computer in a public use area but the point that i was trying to make here is i got all this stuff on the desktop the moment i log off and log back on all of those files will be gone and in fact the sound max thing is going to come up again all right so that's how you set up this program and that's how you're supposed to use it now we're going to get into the point of the video where we just try to mess everything up so what i've done is i've logged back into my user account here and we're going to go into the user settings and allow uh basically full access so we're going to turn on no restrictions which again will tell us is not recommended going to go no restrictions and we're not going to block anything and we're going to disable all of this stuff here and pretty much what we're going to try to do is see how well that this uh, protect the hard disk functionality works now notably where it stores the cache file is obviously on the hard disk if we go into my computer here uh, you see right down here this cache file which apparently shows up as a Windows media photo but this is 34.5 gigabytes so this is the hard drive cache file so what we're going to try to do is just log back into the NetCafe account, go into System32 and just wipe a bunch of stuff and then see if it's able to recover from that, which it should. If we delete the cache file, though, we're probably going to screw things up. If we're even able to do that, uh, it might actually try and lock us out from deleting the cache file itself. We will see. Uh, but we don't have any restrictions on the accounts. So we're going to close out of it. And, uh, oh, actually, before we do that, let me go back in here and show you the other options you have for protecting the hard disk. So the default option is how we just had it set up, which is where when you log off, it will just revert everything back to the cache file when you log back in. But you can also have it retain changes temporarily if you want it to revert back to the cache file at a particular date and time. Or you could have it retain all changes permanently, which is just like having it off. Uh, but of course, you still have the cache file there. So down here, you do have the ability to not warn the administrator about losing changes before log off, which is relevant because this takes effect system wide, not just on the user accounts that were created with Windows Steady State. So if I go to log off, of my administrator account, it's going to warn you that if you have this first option selected and you click OK, it will just not save those changes when you restart your system. But you are able to bypass it by choosing this option here, which is what we're going to do. Now, notably, unlike in the NetCafe account, you are able to log off of your administrator account and log back in and have all of your settings be retained by choosing that first option. It's only when you restart your system do they actually uh, reset and revert to the cache file now for whatever reason i've noticed it does uh come back here to the login screen for a while sometimes it doesn't even show the user profiles uh, but it will just 
shut down and restart so for some reason it just like pauses there on the welcome screen and on boot up here we should see that right there windows disk protection is committing changes please wait so it's now writing those changes to the cache file so we're going to log into the netcafe account and we should have uh full privileges now i'm actually curious if it uh sets us back to the luna theme it looks like it does all right uh and we will get that warning down here saying that once we restart everything is going to uh just revert back let's actually see if we go to log off here will it give us the uh okay no so it does not give us the option to like bypass the changes which makes sense uh that's only on administrator accounts but let's go into my computer and interesting okay so it looks like it does disable access to the c drive even if you have all restrictions disabled oh that pff, i didn't turn off the high drives that's why okay let's let's go back and save that setting all right so now if we go into my computer there's the c drive so we can go in here and can we go to folder options and show hidden files uncheck hide protected operating system files hit okay we are able to view the cache okay so before we delete this let's go into windows here let's actually just do this from command prompt um so we'll open up cmd we'll just uh back up here we'll cd windows dell star dot star yes access is denied okay uh now that's a good sign let me just go in here and just do a shift delete. Yes, when I delete 130 items, uh, cannot remove access is denied. Okay. Now this is not an administrator account, so that makes sense. Can we delete the fonts? Yes, we can delete the fonts. Let's go. All right. So, uh, oh, well, okay. Hang on a second. I think they just, uh, well, some of the fonts came back. Let's try that again. This is always one of my favorite things to do on Windows XP, just to screw it up, is just get rid of the fonts. Uh, yeah, it seems to be... Yeah, access is denied. Look at that. Interesting. Yeah, I believe all this is just because, you know, these accounts are created as limited accounts, which, you know, does just prevent you from doing, like, trying to go into the C drive and deleting files system-wide. Uh, we can't even go into command prompt and do the at command to try and get access to the system account. But let's see if we can delete the cache file. Nope, it's not allowing us to do that either. Can we go into program files and maybe wipe stuff from here? Cannot delete. Access is denied. Okay, here's an idea. Let's try to run the command prompt as the following user administrator. User account restriction. Okay, blank passwords unallowed. Logon hour restrictions. Policy restriction has been enforced. Why don't we try Michael and put my password? Okay, so now we have an elevated command prompt, which is not something you would have been able to get access to unless you knew the administrator password. Uh, but let's just go to CD Windows Dell star dot star. Yes. And okay, so a few things were denied, but uh, we should be able to go into here now and see that, uh, let's see, Windows... Um, maybe it didn't do... Let's just, uh, System32. This will give us a good idea. We've got 3,315 files. Let's delete everything in there. Bunch of stuff is denied, but it is taking longer to execute this command, and I do hear the hard drive spinning, so I think it's probably... Yes, it is deleting stuff. There we go. All right. Why don't we also um, open up regedit, uh, which <laughs> unable to locate components. So uh, yeah, we are we are definitely running a, a screwed up Windows installation here. But now, if I were to just log off, okay. Now, notably, we did get rid of the welcome screen, but will that will that save us? Uh, I don't think so. I think we just broke it. <laughs> I think we got rid of Explorer because it just immediately logs off. That is... Wow. Okay. I didn't get rid of the cache file, right? Let me try to log back into my account here. Yeah, it just logs us off. That is hilarious. All right, um... Well, we can't even shut down. 
We don't have that ability. Let's just, I guess, do a force restart here. This is gonna be great. Hey, look at that. Look at that. So it did revert our settings successfully. That's awesome. Uh, even after, you know, breaking, even logging into my personal account. So that's great. Yeah, we're, we're back. If we go into Windows, we did take a look at the System32, uh, you know, amount of files, and we're back to 3,315. So yeah, it successfully reverted our changes. So that works. Uh, now, of course, if we delete the cache file and do all of that, I imagine we're going to run into problems. So why don't we try to do that again? We'll open up a command prompt here as my user account. And okay, so let's go back up to the C drive. Oh, I guess it's hidden from uh, DIR here. So let's just do uh, Dell um, cache.wdp. Could not find cache.wdp, huh? That is interesting. Okay, let's uh, task kill slash F slash I M explorer if i can spell right lorer.exe and we'll run explorer now under my user account so now if we go into here we should just be able to uh, delete the cache file it is being used by another person or program close any programs that might be using the file and try again all right even after killing a bunch of processes in the task manager it still it says it's being used by another person or program so why don't we try to get into the system account here so uh, we'll do at 2109 slash interactive cmd.exe uh gosh it's been a while since i've done this so there we go. This is now an elevated uh, super command prompt, uh, where if we were to run tasks from this, it'll execute as the system user. So let's uh, task kill slash f slash i m explorer l o oh my gosh l o r e r dot exe, and we'll run explorer. And there we go. We are starting explorer as the system account. So now. We get to see that awesome system username in the start menu. And if we go to my computer, I think we can just delete this. I don't know. Let's uh, do that and let's just see if it still being used by another person or program. Okay, so system account uh, does not get around that. All right, and after another restart, you can see we are totally back to normal. So I got to give props to Windows Steady State. It definitely makes it difficult to get rid of this cache file. And, uh, you know, even after deleting a bunch of system files and restarting, we are able to uh, just revert back to that old hard drive state, which is pretty awesome. Of course, you would never be in this situation in the first place because to do what we had to do, you had to know an administrator password or just a, a password to an account with admin privileges to be able to run command prompt as an elevated process. Uh, even having all those restrictions off, you still can't go in and delete files from, you know, the Windows folder, System32 folder. And, uh, you know, that's just because the uh, account type is a limited account, so it doesn't have any uh, admin privileges associated with it. But, uh, yeah, overall... I'm pretty impressed with Windows Steady State. I think it would have been really neat, uh, you know, if I was back in the mid 2000s, you know, like managing computers at a library or in like an internet cafe or whatever uh, to mess around with this. I'm sure, you know, there were plenty of other solutions probably that would achieve the same thing, but this was Microsoft's way of doing it. And uh, yeah, I think it was pretty cool to take a look back at it today. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member for as little as a dollar a month to get Get early access to my content before anybody else but either way i just want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video